Hey everyone, it's Andrea. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be colouring in Fairy Tales by Emily Oberg. Just a disclaimer, this is an adult channel. We deal with, um, uh, this is about adult hobbies. So colouring, photography and reading, but mostly colouring. And we talk about adult topics when we're doing our colouring chats, which is what this is. And we're going to be colouring this page, which is the dress. Now I'm going to try and use the ink tents in this. I don't very often use my ink tents, so I thought I'd break them out and have a go. I've got a cup of tea because, as you can tell, my throat is still quirky, croaky, and not well. Oh, it's still a bit bad. So we're going to start with this. I'm just going to sharpen up my iris blue pencil. I'm sharpen that. That's all we need, just a little bit. And we're going to have a go at this. So, hello everybody, how are you? Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. It's good to have you here. If you've been here before, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, so, I don't often use my ink tents because when I'm generally colouring, I usually colour my sofa and it's quite awkward to have the ink tents around with the water brushes and extra water for them. But I thought today we'd give it a go and just see what happens. So, how are you all? Are you all okay? What are you up to? What are you colouring? I've been colouring um, my Halloween picture from the old Colouring Heaven steampunk issue. And I really am enjoying it. It's nearly finished. There's not a lot to go. Oops. So, yeah. I haven't actually coloured much this month. I've only finished three pages. But I think... Part of the reason is because I'm taking my time over that Hannah Lynn one. I don't want to rush it and, and wreck it, so I'm really taking my time over it. So. I had a few days off filming, even though I've been posting stuff, because I, I do tend to film two or three videos in one go. So when I film this one, I'll probably film a flip through of a book that I've just received and then I might film something else so it depends on how much time I've got I might not I might leave filming another video until tomorrow night so because I'm back trying to do eBay every day as well now so that obviously means I've got to spend extra time doing that So eBay's going okay. Um, eBay fees go out on at the middle of the month, they go out on the 15th. And normally we hit last month's fees around the 15th or just after the 15th. This month I've actually managed to get my fees and I'm into profit already. So I've got two weeks now where um, if I sell anything on my eBay account, it's, it is profit now. So I can use it to buy more stock or, which I do anyway throughout the month, or I can use it to buy sundries that I need for poly bags or storage. I have bought some storage totes this month as well. So, yeah. I 
I do like the ink tents, I just don't get to, to use them very often. I mean, I can, you can blend with them. Um, if you put two or more colours on, and I'll probably do that when I do the bottom of the skirt. But for the top, I just want it a quite pale blue. And of course, you can always put pencils over the top when you're finished if you want. I like with the markers, but I'm trying to use up all my different supplies because I buy these supplies and I don't use them all the time so as you've had a video of all my colouring books and all my completed pages would you like to see all of my colouring uh, supplies I don't have a lot like some people but I do have a fair few sets of pencils obviously I'm always looking to buy more and pens and marker pens and fine liners and things like that so yeah just leave me a comment down below if that's something you're interested in all the different supplies because I may have something that I haven't used on camera but I do use so in which case I could show you it you know if that's the case so just let me know if you're interested I'll happily make another video I'll have a sip of tea before we start on the skirt so I think we'll use the deep blue which goes next to that as well on the skirt just, just a bit of oh I can't get it out the box is too far away unfortunately I don't have my ink tents in a pencil case at the moment um, just simply because I just haven't bought one um, I have got one I can use because I've got my Black Widows in a pencil case but of course I've got it in a 72 and I've got 96 now and there's another 48 coming out um, apparently in April so what I need to do is get a much bigger pencil case for them and then of course the ink tents can have the 72 because there are 72 in the the ink tent set so, so we just put a light, a light layer because obviously the thicker the pencil the the more vibrant the ink so so somebody's asked me to do a picture in Kelly Horton's book so that's next on our list, we'll do that. We'll do a colour chat on that. I might be brave and do the Wizard of Oz picture, which is the reason they bought the book. Because I love the Wizard of Oz. So yeah, we'll do that. Um, I'm very, very tired. I didn't sleep very well last night. As you can tell, I'm still croaky. I'm still full of cold. Because every time I start dozing off, my nose would get blocked up and I try and breathe in and nothing had happened. So I go, sort of go and wake up. And um, so I only had about two hours sleep last night. So I was shattered all day. Jennifer had to sleep this afternoon, so I did manage to get a, a couple of hours doze, but I'm still really tired, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping tonight she's asleep. Um, hopefully she won't wake me up. I'll get a good night's sleep after I've made this video. So, yeah. There's quite a lot of blue. This is going to be very boring for you, because I'm just going to be hearing that. I'm glad everybody's enjoyed my completed pages and my colouring book collection. Obviously since that I've bought more books and of course I'm a subscriber of Colouring Heaven now so I will get that every month and that's due out next week so it's next Wednesday so um, I don't know what the date is, the 19th or something I think it is so I might get it early. Now last month I got it on the Saturday before 
I was at the hairdressers at the time, so. My partner, Paul, he texted me to say it was here and I was very excited. I couldn't wait to get home and have a look at it then. And I didn't open it, I opened it on camera, which I will do again. Um, this time. So hopefully it will come. I've got a feeling we might be stuck in over the weekend because we're expecting another storm. Because we've just had Storm Cara. Kira even actually, sorry, Kira is the way they spelt it. Storm Kira, um, which wasn't too bad where we were. It was very wet and windy and blew the bins over, but um, some of the shops down in Risca lost the tiles off their roof. We've been all right up here, luckily. Um, just miserable and windy, which makes it really cold. But we are expecting Storm Dennis this weekend. It's already raining. It's not even Thursday. But yeah, there's supposed to be Storm Dennis is supposed to be moving in this weekend, so we ought to put up with more rain. So if that's the case, we'll be stuck indoors, which is a shame because it's hard on Jennifer. She's young, she wants to run around. If it's nice, we take her to the park and she can run around, play with the ball, go on the slide and the swings, but if it's nasty she's kind of stuck because she won't she doesn't like having the rain guard on in the push chair so she tends to kick it off and I won't I don't want to get him wet and cold I look like a bad mum then so but we'll have to see how it is if we have a bit of nice weather we'll make sure we go out for a little while with her just so that she's got some air because it helps her sleep like anybody fresh air is good for you but if it's horrendous weather, there's not a lot we can do about it. So we haven't had any snow where I am. The, up the valleys have, which is just you know, a bit further up away from where we are. But where we are, we're sort of on the edge of the valley, so we tend to miss it. Not always. We do, do we get it. We had a bit last year and the year before, the year Jennifer was born, we had quite a lot. Um, but we did have some hail yesterday. I was... Was it yesterday I went up the shed? Yeah, I went up the shed to get something. And as I went out, it started hailing. They were great big, they weren't hard hailstones. It was more like, it looked more like snow, but it was hail and you could hear it chinking off of things. As it hit pieces of the wood and the metal, you could hear it. Whereas obviously with snow, you can't. And it got quite heavy at one point. I came back in and I was absolutely soaking. Oh, it was horrible. Um, I quite like winter but I like it when it's cold and crisp I don't like the rain and same like in the office yesterday which was Tuesday it was absolutely freezing in the office we were all really cold and today it was like a bleeding sauna there's no in between with them it is it's either boiling hot or flipping freezing. We just can't seem to get the temperature right in there for some reason. I don't know. There we go. Yeah, I quite like this picture. I was going to do a different one, but I mean, there are animals in this. There's little mice in here. And I'm always wary about animals. I'm not very good at them, but I shall have a go at these ones. I'm not saying I'm going to do it all in ink tents. I might, I might not. It depends. It's worth having a go. Like I said, it's all about trying new things and making mistakes and, and not worrying about it. It's not the end of the world. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake. It's only a colouring book. It's not life or death. So, so yeah just waiting for Friday when the new episode of Picard is released so I can watch that and see what happens next that's why sometimes when they um, put a series on I wait till it's finished and I can binge watch the whole thing which is what I pretty much did with Good Omens when that was on I just waited till they showed all the episodes and then I went in and watched them so so did anybody watch the Oscars on the weekend? I don't really have anything to do with it. I don't watch it just simply because it's 
on so late at night in the UK um, and obviously I've got to get up for work on a Monday so it's always on a Sunday night so it's just not really it's not easy for me to, to watch it it's too it's too late really although I did see it one year when I was in uh, America I was in San Diego when it was on one year so we watched a bit of it then so I don't know do you agree with who who won what see I don't really know much but I know Elton John and Bailey Torpin won one for the end titles of Rocket Man for the song I know that I can't think of what that film's called that won it the best picture everybody said they deserved it so that's good Brad Pitt won one do you agree with that and Renee Zwelliger won for the Judy bio or the Judy Garland film um, Judy which was set in 1969 now I'm a Judy Garland fan and I know a lot of people from the Judy community don't like the film it's, it's it's mixed you either love it or hate it it's a bit of a marmite film i can look at it and say well i know it's not real and i can watch it as entertainment and not worry about it it doesn't hurt my feelings it doesn't make me feel bad it annoys me that they haven't done it a hundred percent right there are things that are wrong but there are also nice things in it like the scene with her two gay fans that was nice though that never happened um it's the sort of thing i could see judy doing but it never happened but it, it's a nice scene and some people are looking at it in the sense that if it brings a whole new generation of fans to Judy Garland then it can only be a good thing and in a way yes it will be a good thing but only if those fans actually go out and learn about her and don't assume what they've seen is the truth because I, I know from experience as a Marilyn fan that people just assume what they see and read is correct and they don't bother going to find out anything else. So I can kind of see the point of view from the other camp where they hate it because it, the film is actually based on a stage play that was originally not even based on Judy Garland. It was about um, a cruise liner entertainer or something and then they so no, we can make more money if we make it about Judy Garland. And they changed it like that. And then some people were moaning the fact that Renee Zwelliger does her own singing, not Judy. Which is fine. Renee can sing. She's not the best singer in the world, nor am I. But hey. Um, she's not the best singer in the world, but she's not the worst. And she does a passable job. And I think you've got the whole other thing that if they had used Judy's voice, I'll guarantee it that somebody would have moaned that they'd used Judy's real voice instead of Renee doing her vocals. And Renee sang, and she sang reasonably well. But I, I mean, I know from experience as a Marilyn fan that when they're making films about a star's life they don't really care about what's real and um, what's fiction they only care about what makes good drama so they t turn the timeline upside down and then they um, uh, change things to suit themselves and, and things like that and yeah I mean I think the talk of the town engagement was a, a, an odd point in Judy's life and I think there is the basis of a good story there for a film or stage play but it could be based on the actual truth rather than this made up one. Now that doesn't mean to say I didn't enjoy the film, I did. Would I recommend it to somebody who didn't know anything about Judy Garland and they wanted to watch a film about her? No. I would recommend um, the Lorna Luff production, Life with Judy Garland's Me and My Shadows, which was based on Lorna's autobiography, starred um, Judy Davis as the older Judy Garland, whom she gave a magnificent, amazing performance. She actually became Judy in some of them scenes, which is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic um, performer. So, but if somebody had seen it and 
if they said to me, oh, you're a Judy Garland fan, what do you think about this film? I'd say, well, I enjoyed it as a film and as a fictional piece of fiction based on a real person, but it's not 100% accurate. Um, so just be aware when you're watching it that it is not accurate and that there is more to Judy than what they claim happened in that film. And I would say the same about any Marilyn Monroe biopics. They are terrible. She's always been treated horrendously by fiction writers and filmmakers. And some of the book films and bios on her have been truly atrocious. The most notable of which is, well, most recent notable one of which is um, the Joyce Carol Oates fiasco biography book, which is rubbish. I don't care how well renowned she is, it's a terrible book. And um, Marilyn deserves far better than that. It's a terrible book and the film that they made has already been made into a mini-series and now they're making it into another film and it just doesn't need it. It's, it's horrendous. It's a horrible book. I couldn't... It's unusual for me. I normally wouldn't pass judgment on something unless I've read something or seen it in its entirety. Now, I have seen the entire mini-series of Blonde which starred an actress named Poppy Montgomery. However, I have not read the entire book because I just could not face it. I had to put it down. It's just a load of rubbish. Um, if you want to read a book about Marilyn, why read a fictional book like that anyway? Go and read Gary Vitico Rubles's Icon. Go and read Michelle Morgan's Private and Undisclosed. If you want something a bit older, go and read Donald Spoto's The Bi Biography. But don't read that rubbish. And I'm not saying that Joyce Carol Oates isn't a good author. I'm sure she is. I haven't read any of her other work. I just haven't had a chance all the time because her books tend to be quite big. But the book on Marilyn is atrocious. It's a travesty. Um, I don't talk about Marilyn much in public these days unless somebody brings her up and asks me. Um, I mean, sometimes, yes, I've got a t-shirt on so they can see, oh, they go, oh, that's Marilyn, do you like Marilyn? Oh, yeah, she's, yeah, I like her films, I've seen her films and read a few books on her, and I, you know, unless they actually ask me for further information, I don't really go into it, because I'm fed up of people just taking what they read in the paper as gospel, and not actually bothering to research or look into anything else. It's like they read one newspaper article and it's got to be right. The amount of times I've sat in a room with people who've banged on and on about the Kennedys because they've read one article in the Sun or the Mail or something like that and they assume it's it's 100% accurate and is that and you try and interject with well actually this is the truth this is what actually happened. And they say, oh, no, 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 that can't be right. No, they said this. And we're like, well, you know, are you going to believe a, a newspaper that's got a terrible reputation? Or are you going to believe somebody who has actually been studying the subject for like 20 odd years? They'll take the newspaper every time because it's their image of Marilyn that they want to perpetuate, which is this victim. And there's always some new ridiculous claim coming out every year. I was like, oh really? So I tend to stay away from that now and only talk about it if somebody specifically asks me my opinion on something. I try not to get involved. Let them get on with it. You know. But if somebody asks me then of course I will go into it so I mean, even back in the 90s, late 90s, we knew then that Marilyn only met John Kennedy approximately four times because I can remember telling somebody, well, actually, they only met four times. 
and reeled off those events at which they were in the same room. Some of those times they weren't even talking, they were just in the same room. And a lot of, obviously Kennedy's life has been so well documented that a lot of these claims they can debunk just by looking at his calendar, let alone Marilyn's calendar. But that's why a lot of uh, authors like Gary Vitaclo Rubles and Michelle Morgan have gone very in depth and April Bovea as well with their research into their accounts of Marilyn's life for their book. So uh, April Bovea pro produced a, a great book which is a day by day chronicle. So it's a day by day book. I'll find the link for it for Amazon UK and US if it's still available and pop it down below. Um, but it's a brilliant book and she literally, for every day she can find something, she puts what Marilyn was doing on that day. And it's because of this that we've been able to, because of people like April and Michelle and Gary, that we're able to debunk things like the Robert Slater nonsense. Whereas in like the 19, late 60s, early 70s, he came out claiming that he had married her in 1952. And in fact, the date he, he said they were married was October the 4th, 1952. Now, he didn't know at the time, but he picked a date which was easily verifiable by history. And the, the, the reason it's verifiable is because we have a check that Marilyn made out on that day to, I think it was Jack's Hollywood, Beverly Hills or Rodeo Drive, somewhere like that, um, to them. On that day she'd gone shopping with her acting coach Natasha Lytess on that day and wrote out a check for something she purchased so we know for a fact she wasn't in Mexico marrying this strange man he he did meet her <coughs> and unfortunately he has photographs to prove it and that is where a lot of this his stories have come from, he's used these photographs as evidence. And him and along with a couple of other people are what started the whole murder plot, Kennedy's did it, of which there is no sound evidence for. No evidence at all. In fact the only thing we can actually say is that Marilyn died of a massive overdose of barbiturates, Nembutal and chloral hydrate, of which she had plenty. Now people have said oh but there was no drinking vessel in her room the night she died, the water was shut off in the bathroom. Okay yes the water was shut off in the bathroom but there was a drinking vessel in, in the bedroom the night she died. It was um, a Mexican pitcher and cup there were also glasses photographed in the room that night as well. Now, if you look at the photographs of her bedside table where it shows the floor and you can see all the things piled up, you can clearly see in that picture a glass. You can clearly see a picture, a picture, a Mexican style jug with a cup resting over the top. Now, whether or not that was actually had water in it and was full, we don't know because it was never recorded as such at the time um, but it was definitely there and I can honestly say that I've actually seen that item in real life because it was one of the items that came up for sale at the Christie's auction in October of 1999 so I've actually seen that item <coughs> So now the camera's going to switch itself off in a minute because we're nearing 30 minutes so I'm just going to colour for a bit until it does and then I'll keep talking. Okay, that stopped at exactly 30 minutes, so it must stop every 30 minutes, so I'll keep an eye on that from now on. 
Um, yeah, so I'm not going to go into anything else about Marilyn and her death. If you want to know, leave me a comment below and I'll, maybe I'll make a video about it if there's enough interest. Um, obviously she is another one of my hobbies. Though not as much as she used to be, I don't collect like I used to. I still collect um, newspaper articles and books, but that's about it really. And with books, I'm, there's so many self-published ones now that are just awful that I just tend to go with authors that I know. Well, yeah. So I know that when they make biopics of um, people, it's never going to be 100% accurate because it's just not going to be dramatic enough for the general viewing public who want their, their scandals, they want their... Um, image of that person to be what they think it should be not what it is or was so there we go <laughs> it's taking us 30 minutes just to do the blue of the dress like i said i've used two colors on the bottom part it looks quite nice so by the time you see this you should have seen my first attempt at grayscale which is the chibi girls by jade summer and i was wondering what did you think did you like it do you want to see the rest of me i mean i haven't finished it off yet do you want to see me finish it on camera i did ask this in the video so obviously if you can reiterate whether or not you would just let me know and i can obviously do that for you if that's what you'd like to see. I am loving those Everblend markers, as you know, and I do like the way that it looks on the Jade Summer Grey scale. So obviously I'm very happy to be, to be able to do some more for you if you want me to. Because, you know, you might not want me to, but I can. Like I said, we'll be doing the Kelly Horton book again as well soon. That's the next colour in chat after this one. So after seeing my books, uh, my collection, is there anything you want to see me colour in particularly? I guess obviously we're doing Kelly Horton um, and so on. And one of my subscribers, and I can't remember who, so I do apologise, and I will find out when I make a video about this bit nearer the time, suggested that we have a jade summer month because i've got so many jade summer books and i think okay that's a really good idea so she says i suggested that we do it in june i'm going to call it jade in june and yeah so um we're going to have a month of jade summer coloring because i've got over 30 jade summer books and it'll probably be more by the time we get to June. So June is going to be Jade in June month so I would like you all to join in with me at this um, month-long Jade Summer celebration because I do think that the Jade Summer books are absolutely fantastic um, and they do different styles of art for everybody. So this, this month, this week's book is Boys Are Fantastic and it's a really cute little book with boys doing amazing things and they previously had a girls a fantastic book and I think it's great that they've done a boys one as well so I just think that's fantastic that they've done that and I'm, I'm sure I will get it at some point I don't know when but I probably will and I just think it's a great idea to to do that so that's that. So we're going to do this rose down here next because I need to avoid that. I will be doing the roses obviously on the uh, uh, other one later on the dress. So I'm just going to find some nice red colours. Yeah, chilly. I like that colour. That one. Yours. Lovely. And we'll want a lighter red. So we'll use 
Poppy, which is this one, I believe. No, that's hot. Ah, so this one's Poppy then. I'm just going to give it a good bit of a sharpen. If I can find my sharpener. rose down here you can see that okay but um so back to jade in june so hopefully by then i'll have some more grayscale ones as well and we can do some grayscale pictures from, for jade as well as some of the line art ones um i'll try and color in the ones i haven't colored in so i've still got a few of those and We'll try all different sorts of mediums. So we'll do a week of markers, a week of pencils. We'll do a, week, uh, a picture with the Crayola Super Tips. We might do fine liners if we've got something that needs fine lines. Um, we can use the ink tents and the watercolors. We'll try all sorts of different things on it and just have some fun. So that will be a jade in June. So if you want to have a look at the jade summer section, now you can in the colouring book collection. Um, alternatively, what I'll do at the beginning of May probably is I will just film all my jade summer books. And then what we'll do is we'll at the beginning of May, I'll film all the Jade Summer books I've got and we'll decide what pictures we're going to, to do, what books we're going to colour in and so on. I think that might be the best, best way. So if you want to join in, that would be great. Um, near the time I'll leave my Instagram link for you so you can um, follow me if you want um, but I think we'll just use the hashtag Jade in June and I'll go and find all your pictures or you can post them in the Andrea's Attic colouring group if you remember there again I'll try and remember to put the link to that below and what we can do then is I will take all your pictures if you want and I'll put them in a compilation video for Jade in June that we'll put up at the beginning of July. We can see what we've all worked on for Jade Summer in the month of June if you want me to. If you if you want to just pop in a comment, um, obviously I'll go over this near the time, yes please use in video or put, just put video in it or put no video in it and if you put no video I won't put it in but if you put yes please or yes video I'll um, I'll add it to the video and we'll do a subscriber selection much like John the Bibliophile Colourist does when he does pictures by you for the month we can do one of those I think that'll be quite nice we can all have a go and join in so I hope that you will and you don't make me look a complete prat by not me not having anybody to show it's a long way off yet so if you haven't got any Jade Summer books they are pretty cheap especially if you get them the week they come out they're really cheap if you get them as soon as they're released but even then they're not that expensive if you get them afterwards so I think there's something like $3.99 in the UK the normal one and then after that they're $4.99 although if you get the double ones so like the jig the grayscale one with two in it might be a bit more or the 100 patterns I think they're like maybe six or seven ninety nine but for what you get it's really really good so I'm just gonna do this rose and then I'm gonna call it a night because it's getting on and we've been going for 40 minutes and I think that's enough for you guys for tonight and my voice is croaking so 
It's going to be way over 40 by the time I've finished it. I don't actually know what that is. It's not part of the rose, I know that. Oops. Let's put those pencils away. I am still trying to finish my... Um, what they called? Whips. I need to move on with another one now and get another one done. This is looking quite a nice colour. So I got a feeling this might take a little bit of time just simply because using these ink tense pencils does slow you down a bit, I'm not going to lie. So, we might not get much more done this month on uh, colouring chats if you want to see this one finished. I mean, we've done the biggest part apart from the background, which was the dress. Um, it's good for me to use the ink tents though, because otherwise it's just a waste. They just sit there not getting used. Well, there we go, that's the rose. So we've been going 42 minutes, so I am going to give it a rest now because my throat's killing me. So we'll let this dry and we'll come back and do some more another day. So that's all we've done so far. It's not a lot, I'll admit. But I do like the blue with the dress. I think that looks quite nice. And we'll obviously do the roses in the red and green for the, the leaves. And then obviously we've got all these leaves and there's a ball, ball, ball of wool. There's another rose up there. Cotton needle and some mice. And a watch. Um, a key. I'll have a look at all those bits and pieces and decide what colours to do before we do the next colouring chat. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I mean, like I said, it's not been very entertaining. You've only seen me colouring a dress. Um, we've had a good old chat, so I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.